So you wake up one day and there's no more of this on the store shelves. After a few days of fighting and scratching with the Golden Horde, you've finally managed to pick yourself up a few rolls of this and now it is worth a small fortune. Fast forward another couple of days and you're actually now starting to think about your personal security and how am I going to uh, keep my family safe when all this new stuff is going on. Maybe for the first time in your life, you're now thinking about one of these or one of these, but now you can't find any of these. Oh my God, I'm gonna die. Calm down. I've got six things I'm gonna talk about today that are gonna give you peace of mind in troubled times and increase your chance of survival if this pandemic keeps going or during the next big whatever. This time on K6UDA Radio. By virtue of this hobby, the ham radio hobby, this is centered around emergency communications and so you would expect that most of us are fairly well prepared for whatever uh, the world throws at us. But sadly, I have seen some of your kits. And <laughs> frankly, when it comes to your Radio Go kits, some of them are top notch, the best, uh, you know, better than I could ever imagine to put together. But when it comes to your personal survival kit, <sighs> you're gonna die. Guys, if you're new to this whole idea of disaster preparedness, of prepping for emergencies, of having, uh, having an adequate food supply at your house, and you're just, and you're scared right now because, you know, I mean, we've got forced isolation, quarantines, the real possibility of martial law looming upon us. Uh, all kinds of really uncertain things. A lot of us are out of work right now and without income. Stick with me for the next few minutes. I'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks on how to survive this, how to actually uh, come out of this on the other end better than you are right now. But before I go there, uh, if you haven't already hit the subscribe button, hit the subscribe button up there and the little bell notification right next to it. Give this video a big thumbs up and share it everywhere you can because it's important and uh, the subscriptions and the sharing are huge uh, to keep these videos coming. And if you like this type of video, let me know in the comments below. We got a lot to go over in a short amount of time, so let's get busy. Come on. Boom. Water. This is the number one survival item that we all need. Without this stuff, life ceases in about three to four days. Why the hell is everybody Pouring water at the grocery store. They're buying up bottles of water, uh, flats of water, just wiping the stores out. You have a tap in your house and the tap is generally good. If for some reason the tap is not good for whatever reason, you can boil the water. You could treat the water chemically. There's a lot of things you could do including but not limited to putting it in the a bottle and exposing it to sunlight uh, in a clear bottle over a period of about a day will disinfect most things out of the water and make it drinkable. So you've got literally just about an unlimited supply of water. You don't need to go to the store. You don't need to hoard this stuff like it's going out of style. If your water supply does get contaminated, there are all kinds of options. For the home, you could do something like this big Berkey, which is kind of the standard 
in uh, water filtration. If you're looking for something a little less, uh, a little less big, a lot less expensive, and uh, something portable that you could take with you camping or whatever, you could do something like this Catadyne, available at just about any uh, sporting goods store, REI kind of backpacking store. And for those true emergencies where you can get caught uh, you know where you need to drink and you might only have a stream or a pond to drink from and you're really really thirsty the life straw this has saved countless lives all over the world you know last week when we all started going to the grocery store because the toilet paper was gone well the next item that was sure to leave was the fresh meats so meat and poultry, gone. Fresh vegetables, gone. Fruits, gone. The canned goods started flying off the shelves. Well, actually, it was just all the really good stuff that everybody wants. Those were empty. There was still a lot of canned goods left on the shelves in most grocery stores. You might have had to take maybe the ones that you wouldn't normally buy, but they were available and you could buy them. And I'm sure unless there's another big run on it, you'll still be able to buy it. If you're still looking for food and you want to stock up on some food in the house, look at those, uh, look at those off brands, look at the canned stuff, look at canned tomatoes, canned vegetables, green beans, all the things that you probably don't really want all the time. But hey, you know what? When you're hungry and you can't get out of the house, uh, you will thank me. <laughs> There's some food right there. Now for you campers in the audience, you are probably very, very, very familiar with things like the Mountain House. For those of you not familiar with the Mountain House brand, this is freeze-dried foods uh, made for camping, backpacking, very lightweight. Just add hot water, seal up the bag and let it sit and in about 15, 20 minutes, you have a nice hot meal. These are fairly expensive per serving, but uh, every once in a while you could find them on sale at places like Costco by the case. All right, along the same lines are MREs. This is standard fare for our soldiers abroad who are stationed in the field, and it is high calorie, very densely packed uh, food this will give you a lot of energy in a small portable package. These are most likely to be found either online or in uh, survival or prepping stores. For home use and longer term storage, I highly recommend buying stuff in bulk like these uh, number 10 cans. I bought this at uh, Walmart of all places that does sell bulk items. Now, right now, all these foods are pretty much gone from the shelves at Walmart, but they will get restocked. Now, there's a lot of the freeze-dried fruits and vegetables that I like to put into our daily rotation uh, for snacks and food. This is a uh, this is a great little healthy snack, uh, and and I love to eat it just right out of the can. Now, if you want to have this stuff rehydrated, just soak it in water and you've got uh, regular pieces of mango. Now, if things get really desperate for you and you're just completely out of food, something like these survival tablets or uh, survival bars will get you through a very, very rough patch in your life. Uh, not a substitute for long-term survival though. All right, so now is the time, right now, while fuel prices are low, while the demand is low at this moment, the time to fill your tank in your car. Don't let your tank get below half empty. That way, if something happens, if there is a shutdown, if there's a power shutdown, if there is a... Uh, some kind of a gas emergency that happens. You've got enough in your tank right now to get you where you need to go and to do the things that you need to do without going into panic mode over just one more thing. 
Now, those of us that live in California, specifically Northern California, know all about the importance of having a generator at the house. Last summer, people in Northern California started experiencing what is called the uh, power shutoffs. This is another reason to uh, stock up on fuel a little bit. Uh, I keep uh, 15 to 20 gallons of fuel ready to go in the generator just in case I need it. And I rotate it by putting it into the car uh, after a couple of months and then replenishing the jugs. The next thing you're out of, toilet paper and cleaning supplies. I don't know, my friends. This one I think caught almost all of us uh, a little flat-footed. Who would have thought that the big run on everything would start with toilet paper? Toilet paper, hand sanitizer, and then all the rest of the cleaning supplies just went flying out the door. I guess uh, before this happened, nobody cleaned anything or wiped their asses. Things you could do uh, if you absolutely run out of cleaner and toilet paper. Go find some baby wipes. Those are still available at most like CVS, Walgreens, whatever, uh, pharmacies, and some of the big box stores. You could still buy the baby wipes. Uh, a lot of times you could find paper towels, old newspaper, and as far as cleaning things, find a bottle of bleach. Make a 10% bleach solution, 10% bleach to water, and wipe things down once a day with that 10% bleach solution. You'll be just fine. And when the cleaning supplies come back, buy a few extra every time. Buy one extra every time you go. Here's another odd duck in the room. Uh, guns and ammo. Guns and ammo as of late in the last week or two have become extremely scarce. Major suppliers are asking exorbitant amounts for ammunition. What's different about this run on guns and ammo, as opposed to the ones that we've had in the past, this is a run by first time purchasers. People who have in the past been fairly liberal in their thinking, fairly, um, dare I say, socialist, and now, just now, they're finally figuring out that this is the only equalizer that they have to protect themselves because they're realizing the government isn't going to be able to do it. Because of the virus, well, the state of California has deemed that uh, gun stores are non-essential businesses and ordering them to be closed while leaving open pot stores. Yes, uh, that's not cooking pots. That's a uh, smoking pot. Pot stores are deemed as essential businesses. Your Second Amendment rights are not. Something wrong there. And for my next trick, I will tie this all back to the art of ham radio. So I may be going out on a limb here and I may be just completely wrong, but I see a very strong potential for the next hoarding item to be ham radio. You see, we're in unprecedented territory right now. I mean, everything is just way screwy. The first thing to get hoarded, toilet paper, really? People who have never considered gun ownership running out and paying way more money than these things are worth just to get one. And mind you, these are people that have been totally on board with the gun control thing for years and years and yet these are the same people right now who are flooding gun stores, actually standing in line at gun stores to pick these things clean. So my prediction is if the internet and the cell phone industry or the, the cell provider industry goes into a failure mode or a potential failure mode, we are going to see a huge influx of, uh, of people turning to both, uh, both inexpensive, well, that isn't inexpensive, but we'll see a huge influx of non-hams um, 
scooping up both the super expensive radios and the not as expensive radios in an effort to stay ahead of that whole communications curve. I want you guys to be kind of on the same page that I am on and remember that we also need to kind of preserve a backup plan for ourselves, which means if you only have one radio right now and that radio fails for whatever reason and we have a uh, a buying frenzy going on you're going to be a little sol so my advice to you is stock up now if you have one make it two if you've got one or two hts but you don't have a mobile maybe this is the time to go out and pick up a 50 watt radio so you've got extended communications should these things become useless. And while you're at it, this is the perfect opportunity while we're all locked in our houses to study up and maybe uh, get, get yourself ready to upgrade, whether it's from technician to general or general to extra, and get yourself on HF. Maybe pick up an HF radio that you can use for longer distance uh, communications and or picking up news and information from outside your immediate area, which I can see as a very important kind of a tool if things really start to go downhill in other areas. If you enjoyed this video, please give it the big thumbs up right now. And if you got any information out of this, if you think that this is uh, good information for maybe the new ham, the non-ham, somebody who might just be waking up into this whole thing about a little personal responsibility and preparedness, please share the video. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button, hit the subscribe button right up here right now. Well, it's down there, but hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification right next to it. Please consider supporting me on Patreon or PayPal. Uh, if you have an email question, there's the email address. And I hope you guys stay safe, stay virus free, and have a great day. I'm Bob, K6UDA, and I'm out of here. 7-3. Thank <laughs> you.